Oh, good morning. The day the church remembers Claire for CC and John Henry Newman. For those who don't remember him, he's the man with the big nose who started the Tractarians. Something to read. So two interesting people, a quick depiction of who they look like, and I reckon the second is probably more accurate than the first because he's a lot nearer to the time we are, but there we go. O oh Lord, open our lips. And our mouth shall proclaim your praise. God be gracious to us and bless us and make his face to shine upon us, that your way may be known upon earth, your saving power among all nations. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. O oh, let the nations rejoice and be glad, for you will judge the peoples righteously and govern the nations upon earth. Let the peoples praise you, O God, let all the peoples praise you. Then shall the earth bring forth her increase, and God, our own God, will bless us. God will bless us, and all the ends of the earth shall fear him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. The night has passed, and the day lies open before us. Let us pray with one heart and mind. As we rejoice in the gift of this new day, so may the light of your presence, O God, set our hearts on fire with love for you, now and for ever. Amen. Psalm 37 Do not fret because of those who are evil, or be envious of those who do wrong. But like the grass, they will soon wither. Like green plants, they will soon die away. Trust in the Lord and do good. Dwell in the land and enjoy safe pasture. Take delight in the Lord, and he will give you the desires of your heart. 
Commit your way to the Lord. Trust in him and he will do this. He will make your righteous rewards shine like the dawn, your vindication like the noonday sun. Be still before the Lord and wait patiently for him. Do not fret when people succeed in their ways and they carry out their wicked schemes. Refrain from anger and turn from wrath. Do not fret, it leads only to evil. For those who are evil will be destroyed, but those who hope in the Lord will inherit the land. A little while and the wicked will be no more. Though you look for them, they will not be found, but the meek will inherit the land and enjoy peace and prosperity. The wicked plot against the righteous and gnash their teeth at them. But the Lord laughs at the wicked, for he knows their day is coming. The wicked draw the sword and bend the bow to bring down the poor and needy, to slay those whose ways are upright. But their swords will pierce their own hearts, and their bows will be broken. Better the little that the righteous have than the wealth of many wicked. For the power of the wicked will be broken, but the Lord upholds the righteous. The blameless spend their days under the Lord's care, and their inheritance will endure forever. In times of, of disaster they will not wither. In days of famine they will enjoy plenty. But the wicked will perish. <clears throat> Though the Lord's enemies are like the flowers of the field, they will be consumed and they will go up in smoke. The wicked borrow and do not repay, but the righteous give generously. Those the Lord blesses will inherit the land, but those he curses will be destroyed. The Lord makes firm the steps of the one who delights in him. Though he may stumble, he will not fall, for the Lord upholds him with his hand. I was young and now I am old. Yet I've never seen the righteous forsaken or their children begging bread. They are always generous and lend freely. Their children will be a blessing. Turn from evil and do good. Then you will dwell in the land forever. For the Lord loves the just and will not forsake his faithful ones. Wrongdoers will be completely destroyed. The offspring of the wicked will perish. The righteous will inherit the land and dwell in it forever. The mouths of the righteous utter wisdom, and their tongues speak what is just. The law of their God is in their hearts. Their feet do not slip. The wicked lie in wait for the righteous, intent on putting them to death. But the Lord will not lead them in the power of the wicked or let them be condemned when brought to trial. Hope in the Lord and keep his way. He will exhort you to inherit the land. When the wicked are destroyed, you will see it. I have seen a wicked and ruthless man flourishing like a luxuriant native tree, but he soon passed away and was no more. Though I looked for him, he could not be found. Consider the blameless, observe the upright. A future awaits those who seek peace, but all sinners will be destroyed. There will be no future for the wicked. The salvation of the righteous comes from the Lord. He is their stronghold in time of trouble. The Lord helps them and delivers them. He delivers them from the wicked and saves them because they take refuge in him. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. 1 Samuel chapter 17, verses 1 to 30. Now the Philistines gathered their forces for war, and assembled at Socho in Judah. They pitched camp at Ephesdamim, between Socho and Azekah. Saul and the Israelites assembled and camped in the valley of Ella, and they drew up their battle line to meet the Philistines. The Philistines occupied one hill and the Israelites another with the valley between them. 
A champion named Goliath, who was from Gath, came out of the Philistine camp. His height was six cubits of a span. He had a bronze helmet on his head and wore a coat of scale armour of bronze weighing five thousand shekels. On his legs he wore bronze greaves and the bronze javelin was slung on his back. His spear shaft was like a weaver's rod and its iron point weighed six hundred shekels. His shield bearer went ahead of him. Goliath stood and shouted to the ranks of Israel, Why do you come out and line up for battle? Am I not a Philistine, and are you not the servants of Saul? Choose a man, and have him come down to me. If he is able to fight and kill me, we will become your subjects. But if I overcome him and kill him, you will become our subjects and serve us. Then the Philistine said, This day I defy the armies of Israel. Give me a man and let us fight each other. On hearing the Philistines' words, Saul and all the Israelites were dismayed and terrified. Now David was the son of an Ephrathite named Jesse, who was from Bethlehem in Judah. Jesse had eight sons. And in Saul's time he was very old. Jesse's three oldest sons had followed Saul to the war. The firstborn was Eliab, the second Abinadab, and the third Shammah. David was the youngest. The three oldest followed Saul, but David went back and forth from Saul to tend his father's sheep at Bethlehem. For forty days the Philistine came forward every morning and every day and every evening took his stand. Now Jesse said to his son David, Take this ephah of roasted grain and these ten loaves of bread for your brothers and hurry to their camp. Take along these ten cheeses to the commander of their unit. See how your brothers are and bring back some assurance for them. From them, sorry. They were Saul and all the men of Israel in the valley of Ella fighting against the Philistines. Early in the morning David left the flock in the care of a shepherd, loaded up and set out, as Jesse had directed. He reached the camp as the army was going out to its battle positions, shouting the war cry. Israel and the Philistines were drawing up their lines facing each other. David left his things with the keeper of supplies, ran to the battle lines and asked his brothers how they were. As he was talking with them, Goliath, the Philistine champion from Gath, stepped out from his lines and shouted his usual defiance, and David heard it. Whenever the Israelites saw the man, they all fled from him in great fear. Now, the Israelites have been saying, do you see how this man keeps coming out? He comes out to defy Israel. The king will give great wealth to the man who kills him. He will also give his daughter in marriage and will accept his family from taxes in Israel. David asked the men standing near him, What will be done for the man who kills this Philistine and removes this disgrace from Israel? Who is this uncircumcised Philistine that he should defy the armies of the living God? They repeated to him what they had been saying and told him. This is what will be done for the man who kills him. When Eliab, David's older brother, heard him speaking with the men, he burned with anger at him and asked, Why have you come down here? And with whom did you leave those few sheep in the wilderness? I know how conceited you are and how wicked your heart is. You came down only to watch the battle. Now what have I done, said David, can't I even speak? And he turned away to someone else and brought up the same matter. And the men answered him as before. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Thus says God, who created the heavens, who fashioned the earth and all that dwells in it, 
who gives breath to the people upon it and spirit to those who walk in it. I am the Lord, and I have called you in righteousness. I have taken you by the hand and kept you. I have given you as a covenant to the people, a light to the nations, to open the eyes of the blind, to bring out the captives from the dungeon, from the prison those who sit in darkness. I am the Lord, that is my name. My glory I give to no other. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. I have given you as a light to the nations, and I have called you in righteousness. Luke chapter 23, verse 55b to chapter 24, verse 12. Then they went home and prepared spices and perfumes, but they rested on the Sabbath in obedience to the commandment. On the first day of the week, very early in the morning, the women took the spices they had prepared and went to the tomb. They found the stone rolled away from the tomb, but when they entered they did not find the body of the Lord Jesus. While they were wondering about this, suddenly two men in clothes that gleamed like lightning stood beside them. In their fright the women bowed down with their faces to the ground. But the men said to them, Why do you look for the living among the dead? He's not here, he has risen. Remember how he told you while he was still with you in Galilee. The Son of Man must be delivered over to the hands of the sinners, be crucified, and on the third day be raised again. Then they remembered his words. When they came back from the tomb, they told all these things to the eleven and to all the others. It was Mary Magdalene, Joanna, Mary the mother of James, and the others with them who told this to the apostles. But they did not believe the women, because their words seemed to them like nonsense. Peter, however, got up and ran to the tomb. Bending over, he saw the strips of linen lying by themselves, and he went away, wondering to himself what had happened. This is the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. When you pass through the waters, I will be with you. When you walk through fire, you shall not be burned. I have called you by name. You are mine. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit. Fear not, for I have redeemed you. I have called you by name. You are mine. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Blessed be the Lord, the God of Israel, who has come to his people and set them free. He has raised up for us a mighty Saviour, born of the house of his servant David. Through his holy prophets God promised of old to save us from our enemies from the hands of all that hate us, to show mercy to our ancestors and to remember his holy covenant. This was the oath God swore to our father Abraham, to set us free from the hands of our enemies, free to worship him without fear, holy and righteous in his sight all the days of our life. And you, child, should be called the prophet of the Most High. For you will go before the Lord to prepare his way, to give his people knowledge of salvation by the forgiveness of all their sins. In the tender compassion of our God, the dawn from on high shall break upon us, to shine on those who dwell in darkness and the shadow of death, and to guide our feet into the way of peace. Glory to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, is now, and shall be for ever. Amen. They who wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. 
They shall mount up with wings as an eagle. Lord, a new day. And as the sun begins to shine, as again we find ourselves promised such warm weather that some will struggle. Lord, we thank you for today. And as we maybe enjoy the heat, maybe not, we think of those who live in places where there is famine, where there is drought, where life is difficult to sustain. We think of the joys and the privilege we have of living in a place which is free from conflict, whose government does not oppress it as so many governments of the world do. And Lord, we come this morning and we offer you this day, we offer you ourselves, Consecrate this day and us to your service, we pray. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, conflict continues around the world. Crimea, the airbase, has been badly damaged by Ukrainian bombs. Parts of southern Ukraine are being snatched back. Russia continues to lie and complain that everybody is against them but if you want people to be your friends you need to be a friend and we pray for every nation in conflict today every nation where there are, are repressive wicked regimes we pray for america divided into republican and democrat as trump stirs up the masses Many think in preparation for a 2024 attempt on becoming president again. May the Lord have mercy on their souls. May they find unity. May they find truth and may they applaud justice. And we pray that for every country where the governments and the leaders tell lies, portray things as are not and look after their own friends. Lord, we pray for the nations of the world this day we pray for the nations who are being canvassed by Russia to be friends for they have so few friends elsewhere we pray for the outcome of the elections in Kenya we pray the situation in Rwanda. We pray for the places in the world where this day there is no peace, no joy. And Lord, we thank you that you are our peace, you are our joy, and we lift to you the needs of this world. Saying, as we often do, come Lord Jesus, Bring an end to all that is wrong. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. And Lord, I thank you that the churches today are banging the drum and saying to the government and those in the energy sector, those with power and influence, to stop doing all that they do to put people into poverty in this land. And as people say, well, they should spend their money on other things and drink and cigarettes. A poll says that, in fact, most of the people who go to food bank, neither smoke nor drink, work, but still cannot do what is needed to meet the needs of their families. Father, we... Look at the needs of the church who are so caught up at times in our concern over numbers that we forget that our concern should not be for possessions, should not be for popularity, but for being a people who are righteous and caring. Lord bless the church and make her a blessing this day we pray, beginning with us. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. 
and we pray for the people on our hearts and minds this day for those we know who have challenges before them and we pray for Maureen as she prepares for her eye surgery tomorrow we pray for Colin that they moves to get an appointment with a cardiologist today may come and bring some fruit we pray for Charles who's waiting to go and have a procedure on his eyes also we pray for Stan Parry as he continues to recover and for Kev Sanford and his recovery from his knee surgery we pray for the people in our churches for Linda and Alan for Charles for Norma for Maureen for Beryl both Beryls Beryl Davis as well for Val and Sylvia Sheila and daughter Karen for Norman for Beryl Davis, for Joan and Alan Dewhurst, for Estherine, for Molly and daughter Heather, for Enid, for Barbara and Terry, Derek Jones, Stan Parry and for John Hambridge. We pray for Elaine and Emily and Elaine's mum as she cares at times for both. We pray for those who are pregnant, for Timon and Helen, for Catherine and Sam for Poppy and Elliot. We pray for the Peace family as him continues to build his business and be busy but finds it fraught at times with baffing around as he might put it. We pray for the Palmers, for the Mackenzies, for the Mitchells, for the Cottrell family for the Holmes family, for the Hattons, for the Palin family and for the Gibbards, the Samfords, for Philip Hope and his trip abroad with granddaughter and family, for the Watmore family as they stand with Pat, for the Williams family and for the Popovs in Ukraine, for Gillian Meller, for Luke, for Steve Kingston, for June Hawley, Joe Johnson, we pray for Janet and Brian as they care for family members. We pray for Emma and Rebecca with their long COVID and for all who are suffering the effects of COVID. We pray for Josh and Belle, Harry and Damien. For Caleb and Louis. And we pray for families and for marriage. And for especially those who struggle in their relationships at this time. We pray for those who've been diagnosed with various forms of dementia. And we pray for the families as they stand with them. We pray for Kath, a woman building a church, pioneering a church in Cornwall. Hallelujah. We pray for Mo and Olive and Wendy Hilton and for all who are struggling. All who mourn this day and we pause and pray for the people on our hearts and minds Lord in your mercy hear our prayer God of peace who in the poverty of the blessed Clare gave us a clear light to shine in the darkness of this world. Grant us grace so to follow in her footsteps that we may, at the last, rejoice with her in your eternal glory. Through Jesus Christ, your Son, our Lord, who is alive and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God now and for ever. Amen. With the words our Saviour gave us, so we pray. Our Father in heaven, hallowed be your name. Your kingdom come, your will be done on earth as in heaven. Give us today our daily bread. Forgive us our sins as we forgive those who sin against us. Lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For the kingdom, the power, and the glory are yours, now and for ever. Amen.
The Lord bless us and preserve us from all evil, and keep us in eternal life. Amen. Let us bless the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thanks for being with us. We'll catch you this evening, and if we can help, you know where we are. Bye for now.